Hi, everyone. This is Alalita Sharma. I am one of the co-chairs for the Technical Advisory Group for Observability at the CNCF. And I am uh, happy to present this uh, session on giving you an update of what we have been doing in the Technical Advisory Group, short also known as TAG. Um, and along with Matt Young, who is my fellow co-chair, and uh, of course, uh, the third co-chair being Richard Hartman, who is unable to join us today. Um, I'd like to first of all uh, do introductions and a very quick introduction for Matt Young, who is my fellow co-chair. Matt is a principal cloud architect at Evercote uh, and is deep in the midst of architecting, infrastructure, services, developer-focused tooling for all things cloud. At Evercote, he has had an extensive amount of experience and um, specializes in, uh, in research as well as development of embedded systems, virtualization, distributed applications, enterprise architecture, a lot of different areas. And Matt also has been an awesome co-chair for the CNCF SIG observability. Uh, and of course, in his spare time, copious spare time finds some Zen in his family, <laughs> motorcycles and tennis matches. Uh, that said, again, Matt, over to you uh, and let's uh, walk through the rest. Uh, certainly. Um, thank you, Alalita. Uh, so Alalita joins us, uh, hello everyone. Alalita joins us recently uh, and, has, and is our newest co-chair. We are thrilled uh, to have her uh, to fill our third uh, co-chair spot. Um, she brings with her uh, a wealth of industry experience and background, not only in the technical aspects of observability tooling, uh, but also, and perhaps more importantly for the, for the tag, or as importantly rather, um, experience and, and, and a demonstrated track record of building open source communities uh, and, and fostering them and shepherding them, uh, bo both from a technical, but also from an interpersonal and organizational uh, perspective. Uh, she is uh, a member of the Open Telemetry uh, Governance Committee. Uh, she's a board. Uh, she's on the board of directors uh, of the Unicode Consortium. Uh, she has served on the boards of OSI and SFLC. Uh, in addition, she's an, led you know, engineering teams at, at, at places you may have heard of before, such as Wikipedia, Twitter, PayPal, and IBM. Uh, re most recently, uh, she is heading up observability uh, and open telemetry work. Uh, at AWS, uh, so we we, are, we welcome her, uh, and we're really looking forward to what comes next. Um, before we start, I, I, I really would like to uh, call out some words that that speak to us from <laughs> from the '70s and '80s. Uh, Donella Meadows uh, was a researcher uh, that well, she was one of the first people was the first person to tell us that we as a species are going to run out of wood and oil. Um, she was part of uh, the, the systems research group uh, out of MIT uh, with Mr. Forrester. Uh, and posthumously, a book was published a few years ago called Thinking in Systems. And it summarizes almost 30 years of her work. Uh, it's relevant in particular for observability because that work that she contributed to, uh, and in many cases spearheaded, gave us concepts like reinforcing feedback loops uh, and stocks and flows. Basically, the control theory that was the precursor to uh, the declarative state and its uh, controller reconciler pattern uh, that we find in Kubernetes and operators and what has really driven a lot of the complexity uh, that observability, observability tooling uh, has, has grown in the open source space to meet. One of her quotes that I find the most encouraging uh, and relevant here is, in spite of what you majored in or what the textbooks say, uh, or what you think you're an expert at, follow a system wherever it leads. It will be sure to lead across disciplinary lines. Uh, later on, uh, we'll be talking about some of the features uh, and the potential that we have in the tag. Uh, we welcome and desperately need uh, folks of all disciplines, program managers, uh, product managers, uh, you know, people who, who enjoy writing, uh, video editing, all manner of disciplines, not just engineering, specifically not just engineering. So uh, with that, uh, what is this observability stuff? You know, what, what is it? Uh, you know, is it this? <laughs> is it just lots of screens? 
so that you know everywhere you look, you don't need to move a muscle, just eyeballs, and you can see all the things, maybe. Um, to set some context, though, you know, think back, you know, not, not so long ago, uh, you know, in the beginning, uh, we had monoliths. Uh, and they were great, they weren't broken, they just worked. Uh, and then we had to go and break it all. Uh, <laughs> uh, or, or supercharge it, depending on your point of view. But in, in, in either regard, the complexity that microservices and everything that's come after it, uh, from serverless idioms uh, to event streaming, uh, you know, to, to big data uh, and, and the lot, uh, all of it has dramatically increased uh, the complexity of, of, of observability tooling. Uh, you know, we've created uh, wonderful complex monsters uh, and, and we need wonderfully uh, monstrous tools to, to wrangle, you know, what's happening as we, as we attempt to understand and comprehend the complicated interactions and the systemic behavior of the cloud native systems that uh, we're so actively uh, engaged in creating. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of ways uh, to define observability. Uh, it has become almost a buzzword, but uh, to me, uh, monitoring tells you whether the system works. Uh, observability lets you ask why it's not working. Uh, and in that nuance, I think we find space and opportunity for a tremendous amount of innovation moving forward. Uh, so uh, with that, I'll uh, take it away, Alolita. <laughs> All right. So um, I think, you know, that's a very good segue into uh, what, you know, we are looking at in terms of what observability does for you, right? And observability fundamentally is, um, uh, you know, in the quote we looked at right, right before, so it gives you as a user the ability to understand how your system is functioning, right? And, and, and if there is um, a change in behavior of the system, uh, the health of the system, it is important to first of all, collect the data and, and understand uh, that data to be able to process and analyze that data and then be able to actually understand behavioral patterns that tell you uh, what is wrong, how do you rem remediate it, and hopefully in the long run, um, you know, move towards self-healing systems where systems are smart enough to be able to, you know, prescribe and, and adopt um, yeah, fixes to remediate a particular change in behavior, right? And, and have continually running uh, optimal systems. With that said, again, the types of data that we are looking at in observability today uh, are particularly focused on three data signals, right? There are metrics which are aggregatable. Uh, you could be picking up delta metrics or cumulative aggregations and being able to collect that from all kinds of data sources to better understand you know, uh, what the behavior of a particular uh, pulse uh, on the system is at any particular point in time. You have tracing, which is looking at traces, you know, through an application, uh, and and how, and in a span of time, I'm, you know, an application is that snapshot of data, and then you have logging, right, with logs which collect data, you know, uh, constantly. And you have records of snapshots of, you know, data being collected for particular actions that are happening for a particular data source and then being able to actually collect that and then transmit it to a monitoring system where you can look at the behavior, analyze it, you know, apply uh, sophisticated data patterns and be able to analyze and, and assess the behavior further. Um, can you move to the next slide? Um, so as you, as you see, you know, there's, fundamental data signals of metrics tracing and logging that is already being you know uh, used in the monitoring systems that we have especially for cloud native uh, platforms but also for cloud native applications and as we move into you know being making the full stack of an application observable all the way from the bare metal to the linux to the kernel to the uh, operating system kernel to the um, networking stack to the middleware to the application frameworks to all the way to the application you have continuous profiling data for example coming in and intersecting as you know traces and metrics 
You have crash dumps coming in, you know, real time from different systems. You may also have other types of signals coming in um, and also events, right? Which, which could be uh, construed as logs or it could be as um, events in themselves, you know, with some metrics uh, wrapped in. Next slide, please. So um, that said, you know, the, this is kind of a moving target right now because there's a lot of data that is trillions and trillions of uh, petabytes of data being collected from systems that we are constantly monitoring. And, and as we, you know, move towards uh, more sophisticated observability, testing, fuzzing, chaos testing are all areas that will intersect with, you know, how we are uh, making systems more observable and building end-to-end -end pipelines for being able to handle that. So with that said, um, again, uh, I would like to kind of just show you, you know, some of the complexity that um, we have had uh, in, in this space that we are looking at in observability. Um, as uh, Cindy Sridharan says, while plainly having access to logs, metrics, and traces doesn't necessarily make systems more observable, these are powerful tools, if understood well, unlock the ability to build better systems. And as you can see, you know, that matters because it optimizes our pre-production pipelines. You know, there's the types of tests listed here, unit tests, functional tests, performance tests, you know, fuzzy tests, fuzz tests, uh, all kinds of testing, uh, as well as um, threat modeling, security testing, you know, all are affected by the ability for us to actually have more observable data and self-correct, uh, you know, behavior of systems if they're out of out of whack. Similarly, for deployments, um, you know, in deployment environments, having integration tests, load tests, shadowing, soak tests uh, for releasing, where you have canary, uh, you know, canaries. Um, traffic shaping, exception tracking, uh, or even for post-release where you have, you know, logs, events, chaos testing, A-B testing, um, real user monitoring, events coming in, auditing, you know, and even on-call experience all, all the way from your customer. Uh, and each one of these areas has data that is collected, which, you know, as we look at the system end-to-end -end holistically, uh, gives a very good, uh, you know, understanding of the current health of the system, current status of the system, and leads to a far more end-to-end, -end, you know, complete, well-adapted uh, user experience for end users. So with that said, I'll switch over to Matt, uh, who will talk more about why observability matters. Uh, thank you, Alalita. Um, so I'll take this opportunity to say that uh, in the tag today, in the, in, the, in the group that we formed over the last little over a year now, uh, we have tremendous representation uh, from the vendor community as well as the project community. Uh, you know, pro projects primarily focused on observability tooling. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll cover it a little later, uh, but you know, the, the the tag is a place where not only vendors and not only projects that are making observability related tooling can come together, but also end users that are using uh, these, techno the, these technological uh, building blocks and the capabilities that they provide uh, uh, to, to deliver value uh, to their businesses. Um, and so this is actually a slide from a few years ago when we set out to build out an open source observability platform, uh, not because it was open source, but because it solved business challenges uh, in a way that was, you know, forward looking what we need uh, and that we could engage with and, and contribute to and mutate and expand. Uh, so some of the values that we that we took on and I, I, I would, I, I think that many uh, others in similar situations have some of these same values. Uh, it, it's worth understanding the why, you know, why are we engaged in this? Uh, the technical pursuits are a delight of their own. Right, uh, and we can look at this as engineers and say, what are all the ways that, what are all the capabilities we can do? What are all the cool things we can we can accomplish? Uh, but people trying to use this stuff in the real world have perhaps a different view of what's valuable. Uh, sometimes things that are technically nuanced and, and interesting might be too complicated to understand or not pragmatic to deploy. So, you know, some of those same uh, uh, capabilities 
uh, you know, that Alalita covered uh, translate directly here, but it, they come up as how do we handle incidents, you know, when when we're being attacked uh, by uh, hackers or when we're being attacked by our own bugs because services are face planting and 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 that hadn't been accounted for. What do we do? How, you know, how, how do we respond? What's the what's the workflow and how can these tools inform that? Uh, how do we secure uh, our intellectual property? Uh, but also more importantly, how do we secure the data that our customers entrust uh, to us? You know, we're the stewards of that data. And as more and more uh, businesses go online, as verticals such as health insurance and, and the medical and bio biology, you know, all of these, all of these fields uh, have customer information and personal information uh, that might even be not only sensitive from a privacy uh, perspective, but in addition, it medically protected uh, in, in a regulatory way. Uh, so how do we do that? How do we observe these systems while protecting the integrity and the, and the privacy of, of, our, of our customers? Uh, on the operational side, how do we do auto scaling? How do we detect anomalies? You know, how do we, how do we know uh, what things are costing uh, and how we might be able to op optimize them? From a values perspective, and you know, observability tooling that helps us, us achieve these business goals. You know, how to, to be fiscally responsible, to in a in a perfect world not have to scale infrastructure costs with uh, with traffic costs, for example, uh, and, and all manner of business goals. You know, observability tooling, the ability to see what's happening and why, and how these things relate to each other. Uh, the value they provide is vast. Uh, and there's, again, a huge opportunity to innovate in this space and to build atop and with what's already been uh, uh, put in place over the last you know, few years uh, in this space, in the, which is in its own right, substantial. So it's an exciting time uh, to be in this space uh, and we, we welcome all. No KubeCon talk is complete uh, without seeing uh, this chart at least once. Uh, if we focus in on just the observability uh, section of the landscape, uh, you know, it's grown dramatically and continues to. Uh, there are so many uh, uh, companies and, and projects that are thriving in the space, and part of the TAG's function uh, is to work with them. So I've said TAG a bunch of times. Uh, I should really define what it is. Uh, this diagram is courtesy of, of Chris, our, our CTO, of the CNCF and the Linux Foundation in a, in a blog post he made announcing uh, new TOC members uh, earlier this year. Uh, in the purple box here, special interest groups is what we used to be called. So interestingly, uh, just over a year ago, SIG observability was formed. Uh, and just a less, all within the same year, uh, SIGs were renamed to TAGS. TAG stands for Technical Advisory Group. Um, and TAGS exist to inform the TOC on gaps in the ecosystem, as well as to foster those same ecosystems by, you know, in, in a number of ways uh, consistent with their charter. A little over a year ago, members of the community came together uh, and created the charter uh, for TAG observability. It was a consensus document contributed to by uh, over 20 people uh, from a number of, of, of CNCF members. Uh, I've highlighted some, some excerpts that are, that are really relevant now uh, as we look forward to what what comes for the next for the rest of this year and into 2022 um, and, and the top level item really is to foster and sustain the observability ecosystem again that is inclusive of end user community members vendors uh, projects in the observability space but also projects generally within the umbrella of the CNCF uh, nearly any project <laughs> has observability uh, goals and concerns uh, and so, you know, the, the tag is a place where these, these, these groups can come together uh, in productive discussion. Uh, we exist to identify gaps in the CNCF's portfolio of projects. Uh, for, for example, uh, the Octant uh, project out of VMware came to present to our tag a few months ago. Uh, they're an Apache 2 project. Uh, they are not part of the CNCF, yet they are in scope because they are an open source observability tool. Uh, similarly, uh, end user community members have written their own tools, command line tools, uh, uh, and, and other sorts of solutions of all, of all types that, that may one day be in the CNCF's umbrella of projects, but uh, are not yet, <laughs> uh, but are open source. So they are in scope 
and they are part of our community. Uh, we exist to curate and disseminate patterns and best practices. Uh, it, from speaking from a personal experience, I've benefited greatly by being able to collaborate with others in the space as, as at my company, uh, we have been deploying an open source observability stack with some success. Uh, provide users with unbiased information. Again, as all of these, uh, as all of these folks come together uh, under a shared banner, uh, you know, we, we can produce uh, guidance and, and, and curate information that is not architecture, <laughs> that is not a pitch, uh, but is just, you know, there to provide information that can be trusted. Uh, it's a vendor neutral setting for thought validation. Uh, you know, many of the open standards that we have uh, exist primarily because vendors have decided that interoperability is paramount. Uh, so Alolita will, will talk about this more, but uh, the tag exists specifically to provide that forum uh, to have those discussions in a structured and safe way. So over the last year, the tag has participated in due diligence uh, assessments and reports uh, as projects seek to move from the sandbox to uh, incubation. I need to be clear that the tag is not an arbiter. It's not a decider. Uh, it's a, again, it's a, it's a place where domain experts congregate and are committed to providing the technical oversight committee unbiased, uh, usable, actionable information uh, as, as part of due diligence uh, uh, so that end users can be assured that, you know, incubation means uh, uh, a certain level of assessment and, and foundational homework has been done. The due diligence reports that have come out of these efforts and, and all of the other due diligence reports across the umbrella of CNCF projects are I've found as an end user immensely useful. I encourage you all to check them out. If you're trying to figure out, uh, is this project a good fit or how is it a good fit? Uh, uh, these are a wealth of information that is provided in the open. Uh, so we're proud to have contributed to uh, a number of those due diligence reports. Uh, in addition, we've uh, had guests from, uh, from, from open source projects uh, that are, are entering the CNCF in the sandbox phase. Uh, Pixie is an example of that. New Relic has recently uh, open sourced uh, Pixie and uh, rather has donated Pixie uh, to the CNCF and they're, they're entering. Uh, they came and had a chat. So the tag really is a place where it's a little bit of what's new, what's current, uh, what's challenging? What's pressing? Uh, all of those cons all of those topics might 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 be found at one of our meetings. Uh, and lastly, we kicked off a working group, uh, an end user driven uh, observability white paper that's in progress and and will be out for community review uh, in the coming uh, months. Uh, but uh, that that working group has uh, has launched successfully, and we're seeing some great collaboration between our uh, end user community members. Uh, Alolita uh, will talk about what's coming next. Yeah, absolutely. And, and thanks, uh, Matt. Um, so we are in exciting times in observability as you know, our, the open source projects that are all under the CNCF umbrella, whether that's Thanos or Cortex or uh, Open Telemetry and many other projects like Pixie, um, all working towards specific goals that they have and, you know, uh, working towards uh, what's the coolest and newest uh, feature in their, in their repertoire. So what we would like to do, and we, uh, this is something, again, I invite all of you to kind of come and think about um, and, and discuss with us, is that um, provide more guidance of what's coming in in the ecosystem. Obviously, as subject matter experts, many of us track what's uh, you know and very actively work and what's coming up and what's being built in the observability uh, tool sets and toolkits, and as well as uh, build that out you know to be make available as webinars, being able to make available as uh, you know YouTube um, talks in the CNCF tag channel which is something we can you know, leverage a lot of, uh, provide case studies from end users, as well as you know, different pipelines that end users and developers are using for these observability uh, components in, the, uh, in our open source projects, as well as have project demos through the year you know, in the umbrella of projects that are within the CNCF umbrella, as well as outside. Cross-collaboration is something very important. So we do think that 
uh, you know, being able to demo uh, and learn from each other is a great uh, way to actually build interoperability and open standards towards making it easier for customers to use observability components out of the box. Um, another area we're looking at is work, work group topics, um, such as, you know, continuing to uh, have cross project engagement where we are discussing, as I said, you know, collaboration as well as open standards, interoperability, test suites, and other uh, ways to collaborate closely together, um, as well as, you know, other projects such as gathering feedback from end users for persona development, uh, which is a joint project we've been working with um, other sister um, projects on. Um, and, and needless to say, you know, there are uh, multiple, uh, many, many, many companies that are, you know, participate in our uh, discussions and have discussed over time. Um, we have tagged participants uh, from multiple companies. These are just few of them listed here. Thanks to everyone, you know, for participating and continuing to participate. Um, and I would also like to actually, last but not least, um, welcome all of you to join us for the, these discussions. Uh, you know, a, a advisory group meeting or a user group meeting is as good as the participation that we have in them from everyone and all of us and all of you. And uh, just to call out, we have meetings on the first and third Tuesdays of the month uh, where there are observability meeting uh, notes uh, that we maintain and you can go and look at them anytime, catch up on what was discussed, but these meetings are also recorded so you can catch up on our YouTube channel. Um, the GitHub repository where you can track all the you know, active work that's ongoing, whether those are evaluations or any other comments that people you know, are adding our feedback. Uh, there is a Slack channel uh, ta um, tags dash observability that you can join and um, you know meet other fellow observability um, members and experts, uh, and as well as a mailing list where there's a fair bit of activity, for example, around the white paper and other work groups that are ongoing. Um, we'd of course love to have more work groups and and so and and really welcome your feedback, welcome you to come and help and join in to discuss um, if you have a passion for developer tools and experience, you know, want to share your experience, this is a great place to do that. Um, ideas for, you know, improving uh, observability in general in terms of the open source projects that we have and the different discussions that are ongoing. Uh, whether that's engineering discussions, technical discussions on implementation, whether that's design practices, good practices on, um, you know, how end users can build, uh, consume instrumentation well, or config making configurations easier. There are a lot of topics in this space. Um, and as well as, you know, discussing solutions that work for you and tools that you're building. So that said, I would love to invite you again, you know, to please join in. I would also like to last but not least call out and acknowledge all the folks uh, who have actually participated very actively in our uh, meetings. Um, again, you know, this is a quite a large list and really it's been exciting through the whole year. We're looking forward to having a lots more participation and lots more uh, cool areas that we work in and observability in this coming year. So again, would love to invite everybody to join in uh, for the for the uh, tag meetings uh, that are regularly held, as well as follow us on the channel, uh, Slack channel, and uh, look forward to having and seeing you uh, on on more projects in observability uh, at at the tag meetings. Uh, we are signing off now. Uh, Alali, this is Alita Sharma and Matia Matyong. Uh, as, as co-chairs, see you there.